So first things first, um, you had a party I hear on Monday night. I was not able to attend, but I heard some pretty good things about it. 50s theme or something? 50s theme, poodle skirts. Okay. The Expedia logo. Okay, okay. Some drinks. So did everyone attend or was this? Yes, good, okay. Was it fun? So I, okay, so I, <laughs> I bring this up though because, so Expedia actually has a history of parties. Uh, at the, one of the hottest tickets now in travel is the party at the Expedia conference. Uh, which happens in Las Vegas. Yes, this is, what's the club where this took place? Do you, that was at the club at Caesars Palace. Come on, wow. to see. Were any of you there? All right, so. <laughs> the Expedia team. So this, is the one, right? <laughs> so this is the one, this is the one to go to. So, uh, and uh, how much do you spend on that party? I'm just, because we well. have parties at the Focus Right <laughs> conference. I just n need to know if we need to, up our budget. I've got some execs in the back. I gotta ask. So. Oh, you should yeah. up your budget. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I just asked my <laughs> boss for more money. Up your budget. You've been to both. Okay. Great. So, and I've got another picture here too. Oh. Uh, that's you in the middle. Okay. And you were dressed as what for the party? Uh, that was the '90s theme. We had, we have a theme okay. party every year, and last year we did the '90s theme. Okay. I was Reese Witherspoon. Ah, my okay, dog very nice. My first very nice. Blonde. Very nice. Very when nice. When we did the '90s theme, I said, "What is '90s?" And and who was the guy dressed as the Teletubby in the back there? That, <laughs> that's that. I, he's my hero. I, I mean, that's my boss. Okay. So I, actually, I, I'm bringing the parties up for for a reason. I have an ulterior motive. So at the, the partners conference last year, uh, this was the 20th anniversary of Expedia. So. Yes. It's pretty amazing to think Expedia was founded in 1996. And so now it's the largest travel company in the world by, by gross bookings. And you know, for those of us who've been in the industry for a few years, you might think it's you know, kind of this inevitability, right, of, of Expedia, we're all used to Expedia. But back at the time, in the mid 90s, you know, when I was covering the industry, there were lots of OTAs, right? There was uh, anyone remember Travel Web, uh, Trip.com, mm -hmm. uh, Preview Travel, which was then acquired by Travelocity, which was then acquired by uh, Expedia. So it was not at all inevitable. What, what do you think, what has made Expedia different? What was it about Expedia that made this company break out and actually now gobble up a lot of those brands that were competing back then? The, the first word that comes to mind, Kelly had actually talked about it in her session, is culture. We have a very, very strong culture, and one of the principles that we follow is we measure everything. So everyone knows our objectives, and we're very transparent, and we measure, and that, that's always been part of our culture since I joined the company, and I think that vigor in making sure that we, that we have objectives, that we're transparent with the entire organization, and that we follow up on those all the time. That is really, for me, why Expedia has, you know, has excelled and has really hit some of the, the numbers and the goals that we've hit. So, uh, so transparency in, you know, in what sense? So in terms of measuring uh, engagement with hotels, with, with consumers, like how, can you give some examples? Sure, we measure everything. Um, we're, we're very, very data focused. We measure um, engagement with hotels. We, so for all of you that use our tools, we know how often you're in EPC, and so we measure that. We measure um, conversion. We measure um, uh, guest satisfaction, our NPS scores. So we really measure everything, and what we do is we report out to the entire organization. So every month we have a scorecard, and we report to every single person in the organization and are really religious about making sure that, that the organization knows how we're pacing with our key objectives. So uh, I think Expedia really seemed to take off, uh, actually right around the time that you joined, right? So you joined in 2001, so you, you're a veteran. Well, now what was your title when you joined Expedia? I was a market manager for the Las Vegas market. Market manager for Las, that's a good market to <laughs> it is be, nice. be a manager for. So, 
uh, now uh, working your way up through, uh, through the ranks to, uh, to SVP. Uh, so at the time, you, the, the hotel industry was really going through a very difficult period. The internet bubble had just, had just burst. Uh, we were entering a recession, then there were the attacks of 9-11. Of mm -hmm. uh, so what did Expedia do at that time that really set the company apart? The, you know, 9-11 was uh, obviously a, a horrible time for, um, for the world. It was really a time where we saw adoption of, of online travel excel. And for when I look back at, at my experience, we had a lot of hotel partners where, you know, going through times where they weren't sure if they were going to be able to keep their doors open, and they wanted to make sure that they, you know, kept people employed and using a new company like Expedia that could drive results quickly was a good solution for them. So it was um, it was a time where we really. Um, had great partnerships and really focused on how do we help our partners and how do we make sure that we help them um, run their business and keep keep folks employed and drive business okay. to them. All right, so, and I, I want to offer also like a, a counter kind of narrative or an outcome. Oh, shocking. <laughs> from that, you know, from that period. So, uh, so, uh, so Expedia had really stepped ahead with hotel distribution at a time when hotels were really suffering. But one of the things that also came out, a lot of complaints from hotels as the economy started to recover, they kind of realized, boy, maybe we've given the store away to Expedia. They started to realize that, well, lower rates were available on Expedia, really starting to have uh, challenges and negotiations with the company. You had begun to acquire a bit of a 800 pound gorilla you know, status, right, within the world of, of hotel uh, distribution. Did you guys become a little, you know, arrogant with that, or did you? How did you adapt to, to some of those complaints? Of course, I have to say no. We didn't become arrogant. Um, we have heard that before, um, particularly around 9/11. We actually, as a company, made a very conscious decision that as our company was growing and as the economy was in a tough spot, we made a, a conscious decision. And I specifically remember the day we had the discussion in, in one of our conference rooms to not increase margin. We wanted to make sure that we didn't take advantage of our hotel partners during during a, you know this terrible time. And so I, I don't think a lot of, I, I think that was an important move for us to make. Um, and then, you know, as far as us taking control, I, I don't think so. You know, we, you know, our goal is to help our hotel partners and our goal is to fill their hotels when they need the business. And if they don't need the business from us, they certainly don't have to um, don't have to work with us, or they can yield rates differently. Um, and we we want to be partners, and we did then, and and you know we continue to evolve our partnerships. And a, a couple of the unique things that that we've done is we just um, we're using our technology, our data, and our um, marketing to really help extend what we do in those key areas to our hotel partners. Example would be you know vacations by Marriott. We just launched that. And that is helping the the uh, our partners with with technology that again we live and breathe every day. But you know, it's it's so interesting the whole hotel OTA debate. It's really it seems to have gotten to a fever pitch over the past couple of years. I found that kind of interesting because this is really a debate or a conversation that's been going on for you know 15 well as, you know as we've talked about right 15 plus years or so. What, what do you think are the 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 conditions? I'm talking about the hotel direct booking campaigns mm -hmm. and so forth. What is what are the conditions that have led to the kind of escalation of of this this debate within the industry over the past 18 months? Yeah, it's we have grown at a a, a fast pace, and I think that's concerning. If if you're a large brand and your partner's growing faster than you are. That's, that's cause for concern. Um, you know, I, I have sat in several conversations with, with large brands where they say, you know, I, I'm thinking they're to say thank you for the business, but they say you're growing too fast, 
you're eroding my value proposition to the hotels because you're growing faster than I am. So that, those types of conversations have really led us to how do we evolve our partnerships and how do we help our partners grow their business direct, whether it be independent hotels, small chains, large chains. We want to make sure that as they're going through the time of wanting to drive direct, that we don't want to feud, don't have, want to fight with them and feud. We want to be able to help them with their objectives. So, but that's kind of counter to your mission, right? I mean, don't you want people to book on Expedia? I mean, that's. We do want people to book on Expedia, of, of, of course, um, but we also want our hotel partners to think of us as a customer acquisition channel and utilize us to get customers that they can't get, you know, otherwise, you know, uh, uh, themselves. And then from there, it's the, it's the hotel's opportunity to convert that customer into, into, you know, their their direct customer. So uh, the the example is say the partnership with Red Lion yes. Hotels, uh, for example. So in that case, so Red Lion has their member-only rates, mm -hmm. which one can book on Expedia. But if I book them on Expedia, then I also have to sign up for Red Lion's loyalty program. What happens is if you see a Red Lion Hotel, we offer the Hello Rewards rate or the regular rate. And if the consumer um, wants the Hello Rewards, then we automatically enroll them. And what happens is the consumer gets the benefits of Hello Rewards as well as the Expedia benefits, and the hotel gets the customer information right away. So then Red Lion can um, you know, convert that guest to a Hello Rewards guest, and then from that point, it's really the consumer. If they want to go back to Red Lion or they want to go back to Expedia to book, um, that it's really obviously their choice. But but it's a great consumer value proposition because they get both. Can you share a little bit of what you've seen? Are consumers, are they kind of going one way or the other? If you see consumers who sign up for Red Lion, are they... Are, are you losing them in the future? What, what, what yeah. are you learning so far? That's a great question. So what we're seeing is, um, and ironically, I was with, with, um, uh, I was with Red Lion a couple of days ago, so we, the numbers are fresh. We're seeing about 55% of the business book through the Hello Rewards plan, and we're seeing their uh, visibility in our site increase pretty substantially um, because the way that our site mm -hmm. works is, is uh, our marketplace works is, the, the hotels with the most competitive rates and in inventory, photos, et cetera, um, have more visibility. So what we haven't seen yet, it's, it's still a little bit new, is the repeat rate. So whether they repeat back to Expedia or they repeat back to, um, to Red Lion, but we have agreed with Red Lion that we'll, um, you know, in, a, in about two or three months, we'll get back together, look at all of the data, and then, um, and then do some, some storytelling on what really happened. Do you see this? happening with more hotel chains? It's, it's just been Red Lion so far. You do. There's actually, there's actually um, more news coming soon. <laughs> uh, we, okay. we have a couple of, um, we have two, two accounts that are live now, and then in the next four weeks we have two other accounts, kind of mid-size accounts that, that we'll be doing this as well. But nothing you've announced yet or can announce, announce today? I will get scolded if okay. I announce it we right don't, now. We don't want that. <laughs> so what with, with with the with the initi initiatives, I think I've got a couple of slides here. I just want to show if you can put the slides back up. Yeah, so these are these are the campaign advertisements that have come out. I'm, I'm sure those have been viewed and discussed. I've never you know, seen those at Expedia headquarters. You know, it's funny. I was in our headquarter um, uh, headquarters recently, and in the elevator we have um, video running, and lo and behold. One of these was running through our elevator lobby, oh, or okay. elevator. <laughs> so um, has there been an impact on Expedia you know, business as a result? We, we've just done some work, and I just want to show something really quickly. This is just three brands. This is the conversion rate on the desktop sites of the three, three big brands in the US and when they've implemented their member-only rates on their sites. And you can see conversion was actually on a slightly upward trajectory already, but it seems to have had a, a fairly meaningful impact on their own ability to convert. Have you seen uh, a negative impact on, on Expedia's business as a result? We've not, and we have, again, we measure everything, so we've looked at this um, in chain-heavy markets, markets that are not chain-heavy, different areas around the world, and we have not seen an impact. We've seen a, a bit of an increase in our independent hotels, 
Um, the hotels, again, we, we look at competitive rates and inventory and our algorithm surfaces those hotels higher. So we've seen a bit of an increase in, um, in our independent But it hotels. surfaces them higher because they have lower rates or because they ha they're offering you the lowest rates? They're offering the us competitive rates. Competitive rates. Okay, I think that, I think that was an answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, so what's the end game here for, for hotels? Is, is there an end game? Does this just kind of keep going on? I mean, is this, a, is this a game of chicken or a Mexican standoff or what, what exactly is? <laughs> you know, for, it, we've already seen it die off quite, quite a bit. And what we've seen is um, that the individual hotels are being a lot more vocal about having to offer these discounts and the hotels want more flexibility. So we've seen a, a lot more flexibility over the last, you know, probably six months or so. Mm. And um, I, I, hotels will always want to drive business direct. And I don't think that will ever change. Um, I think what will continue to change is hotels having more flexibility. And, you know, for us, it's about the consumer. We want the consumer to have the best experience and we want to drive business to our partners that have competitive rates, that give value to our consumers, that have great content, great photos, et cetera. Um, so I think that, again, I think these strategies will, will continue. And the way that we look at it is how do we look at having more strategic and unique partnerships? You know, we're looking at, we have a bunch of tests going on where we look at the marketing side, we're linking off to partner sites now. We have um, travel ads product where we put a lot more muscle in, in that where hotel partners can get better visibility during times that they need. So we'll continue to focus on those types of things and having a lot more um, you know, strategic discussions versus purely being a distribution partner. Okay. I wanna switch gears a bit and talk about uh, rentals, uh, vacation rentals and of course, Airbnb, your acquisition of HomeAway, uh, which is, I guess, what, now about a year, year old or about so? About a year and a half. Uh, so obviously, rental's a big part of the ski and the mountain, uh, uh, mountain marketplace. Uh, presumably, the, the goal with HomeAway and all of that inventory, you want to integrate that into uh, to Expedia. How is that shaping up? It's, um, it, it's a test right now. We're testing integrating and, and looking at conversion, looking at the guest experience, and measure, measure, measure. And we'll continue to test until we get in a place where, where we're satisfied. Um, but it's, you know, the, the rental market is incredibly important. Um, obviously, we, we wouldn't have bought Homeway, but incredibly important. So we're putting a ton of time and energy into that space and um, really looking at, again, the user experience and also the technology. We, um, our chief technology um, officer from Expedia went over to run HomeAway. Yeah, sure. So putting a lot of the technology well, best practices. So, in. you know, one of the things I, it's quite interesting about this market, so I know Airbnb is always, they seem to suck up all the headlines, you know, in this space. But I've always thought Booking.com is quite interesting because they're uh, the one company that seems to have integrated a lot of non-hotel content at scale. So you can actually search for and see in a display, you know, a Marietta Hilton Hyatt, you know, in Joe's apartment and, and compare them, which is kind of how we see consumers viewing, viewing the market. What, but it seems like this has been kind of testing that Expedia and HomeAway have mm -hmm. been trying for years. What, what has Booking.com figured out that, that you guys haven't? I think they've been in the game a lot longer than we have. You know, if you look at, we've, we've always had rentals in that product, but not at scale. And booking has been in the game a lot longer than we have. So naturally, based on, on that, I think they have a bit more experience. Um, we're catching up very quickly, and hopefully we'll surpass. Who, who do you guys worry about more, Airbnb or booking.com? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You Good should answer. have said Hilton. Good answer. Or Hilton. Okay, I can throw Hilton. Not in them. There. <laughs> Interesting. Um, what about the urban market, right? So this is where Airbnb kind of rules the roost. Are you looking at rentals in, in urban markets? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We want to rule the roost. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there's you rule some roosts. You 
for sure. All right, I want to switch gears a bit. So uh, I, one of the most interesting areas in travel technology and innovation today, and I know there's a bunch of sessions here, I think you know, later this afternoon and, and tomorrow, all sorts of stuff going on with AI and chat and, and voice and virtual reality and, and so forth. So, and Expedia's been doing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got hotel booking bot on Facebook Messenger. I think there's an Alexa skill yeah. uh, as well. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how that's, how that's going, you know, what you're, you know, what you're seeing there? Yeah, it's, um, we think that is a, an extremely important, um, all of those are extremely important areas for us to make sure that we're thinking about and that we're testing. The um, Alexa, when we announced at the end of last year with um, that partnership, it, that is just a natural, something natural for us to test. And, you know, consumers are, they want information at their fingertips, and so to not have to, you know, log into anything and be able to stand in your kitchen in your underwear and ask about your, you know, travel plans to Banff is just, you know, it's that's which what I it, did actually about <laughs> three days ago. Were you so. in your underwear? <laughs> I, I, I too, am not going to answer that question. Um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, so, but are people actually booking? Are, are they really booking? I, that, that, so I've, I have tried. It's, it's kind of part of my job, but I use right. all of these different startups and services. So I've booked on messaging and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every time I've done it, and I'm not going to mention company names, but it's taken me 15 times as long. It's been 10 times as painful. I could have just gone right on. Expedia hotels booking wherever mm -hmm. and you know done it you know just like that so uh, is this is this something that is it really going to kind of displace uh, our our conventional means of, of booking eventually it's it's going to take consumers getting used to it and it kind of reminds me of you know years ago when people were nervous to book a room online you know I don't want to get my credit card online I, I feel like we're in a transition phase. And you know, we're certainly looking at how do we evolve the technology? How do we make it easier for, for consumers? Um, how do we evolve, evolve, all to, excuse me, evolve our tools for our hotel partners to make their lives easier? Um, I, the numbers are not huge by any stretch of the imagination. Consumers are um, certainly booking that way. But we are also, you seeing more like on messaging versus voice, for example? We are, we are seeing more on messaging. And then what happens is, I think consumers are still a little bit nervous, they'll pick up the phone and call. And I just wanted to make sure that my reservation went through. So, um, but, but I, it, again, I believe that we're in a transition period and um, what we're seeing from our consumers, if they want to interact with us this, this way, they want to learn how to book this way, and um, you know, it, it's about convenience. And these will just become part of the fabric in what, two years, three years, or I, we're talking 10 years? How do you? I, I would say probably somewhere in between there. I, I would like to see it sooner. Um, but again, I think consumers are still a little bit nervous. Okay. All right, so we've got about a minute and a half left. So I always like to finish interviews with uh, some word games, some fun, uh, rather than all this kind of boring, you know, business strategy talk and stuff. So I, I want to do a, a couple of word games if you're up for it. I'm up for it. Okay. So the first, first is either or. So I'm just going to give you a couple of words and you just say the word that speaks best to you. So I could say, you know, chocolate or vanilla, for example. Okay. okay? And I say strawberry. That's, <laughs> that would be consistent with, okay. <laughs> I'll behave. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Skiing or snowboarding? Skiing. Blue or black? Black. Oh, okay. I almost said red. Okay. Well, the options are <laughs> blue, black, and green, right? So, okay. Mountain or beach? Beach. Home or hotel? Home. By the way, the last one, that was the wrong answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I know, I know, I, I should have thought through that. Um, I love... <laughs> love. No, there's no revision here. This, you I, can't I go feel, back. I'm, I'm feeling guilty. This I just is, moved that to is the on beach, the record. So. Okay. okay. iOS or Android? iOS. Google or Bing? Google. Facebook or Snapchat? Neither. Twitter. Well done. Voice or messaging? 
voice. Airbnb or booking? Neither. <laughs> Expedia. OK. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Oh, no. In, and uh, in travel, women's CEOs will equal the number of men's CEOs by the year. Blank. I th 20, 40? Oh. I have to be real. It's only 4 to 5% now. OK, fair enough, fair enough. If you had to choose your favorite Expedia brand, it would be blank. It would be Hotwire. Oh, OK, interesting. You are deeply loyal to Expedia, but for your personal vacations, you secretly book on <laughs> blank. Um. <laughs> <laughs> For market intelligence purposes only. <laughs> uh, Fairmont.com. <laughs> Very good. OK, last. This is, these are easy. True or false? You are really glad this interview is almost over. True. <laughs> Hotel loyalty is overrated. True. <laughs> it pays to book direct. No, false. Airbnb is Expedia's biggest competitive threat. False. Expedia has gotten more than 10 hotel bookings via Facebook Messenger. True. 10 in general? 10, yes. Oh, geez. Yeah. OK, Expedia has gotten more than 10 hotel bookings via Facebook Messenger by people who are not currently employed by Expedia. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, hopefully true. <laughs> <laughs> and last, you'd rather be skiing right now. True. <laughs> Melissa Maher, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>